Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about storing sex and gender in your Microsoft Access database. Now, if you're happy with just storing male and female, yeah, it's pretty easy to do that. But if you want to be inclusive and include the additional genders and sexes that have come about in the 21st century, well, we're going to talk about how to do that in today's video. Today's question comes from Monica in Brookfield, Wisconsin, one of my Platinum members. Monica says, our office is making an attempt to be more inclusive, so management wants to start tracking our employees and customers by gender and allow for a variety of responses such as male, female, non-binary, and so on. How do I go about storing this in my database? Do I just make it a text field now? Well, Monica, that's definitely one option, but I don't like just making it a free form text field because then you get all kinds of crazy stuff. It's the same problem that you run into when you make country, city, state, all those kinds of fields, just a text field, instead of forcing people to pick from a list. Uh, I just recently went through to try to figure out, you know, which uh, countries I have the most students from. And so I had to go through and, and fix all the older records where people could just type in their country. And you would not believe how many people I have from Australia that don't know how to spell Australia. And they live there. <laughs> okay, so I'm not for using just a text field to type something like this in. Also, in the interests of being inclusive, you want to be able to include whatever people want to have you know, as their identifier. So I like a list of the options that you know about, you know, the, the standards, and then give people an other box where they can type in something that might not be on the list. Um, that's the best way I think to go about it. And you, I don't really want everybody just being able to modify the main list too. You know, we've uh, talked about the list items edit form in the past, right? This guy, right? Where you can make a little button here and they can edit the main list. Again, if you allow people to edit the big main list, you're going to get all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's why I suggest have one list for the, the, the items you definitely want to have available and then offer an other option and they can type the other into a text box. Then you can go through once every couple months or once a year and see what other items are being added, right? And if you get a bunch of them that are the same, then maybe you can add that to your main list and then replace all those values. Now, when I first started teaching access back in the 90s, the 1890s, right? <laughs> I'm old. Um, you know, back then we didn't have all this consciousness that we have today of being inclusive of different types of gender. So it was basically male and female. And in my earliest classes, and yes, I actually went back and found my old course materials that I used to use to teach in the classroom. I used to just have one field. I'd make gender or sex, whatever you want it. And I'd make it a yes, no field. Okay. Now the problem with a yes, no field is that you're limited to yes and no, but that also doesn't give you the option to say, I don't know, right? You always want that third option available, which, you know, 20 year old me didn't know this when I was teaching it in my classes. Now, if we save this table and we go to our customer form and we add that in here, form design, add existing fields, there's my gender field, we'll drop it down here. Okay, save that and let's take a peek at what we got, save changes, yep. Okay, here's my gender box, right? I got yes and I got no, all right? Male, female is the way I used to teach it, okay? But this doesn't give me the option for, uh, I don't know, right? If I turn it off, then, well, is this person, you know, just assumed to be female, okay? So you can do a triple state checkbox, okay? What that means is it gives it three states. Open this guy up. And if you go to data, there's a triple state option right here. Now, the default is no. If you set that to yes, you'd think it's going to work, but it's not. Watch what happens. This is a known problem with access. If I click on it now, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Okay. The trick is what you have to do is switch gender to a number field now. All right. So go back to customer T, design view, take gender and make this a number. Because if you remember... Yes, no values basically store a number, right? It's either zero for no or negative one for yes. Why? That's a whole different discussion. But it's zero or negative one. Basically look for zero or not zero. But now null will give us the ability to store that value in there. So now my triple state checkbox actually works. See that? Right? 
Null looks like that with the little dash. Then there's yes, and then there's no. Okay? The key is you got to remember to set it to a number type field. And if you want to learn more about triple state checkboxes, I got a whole separate video on them. Here's a link right there. But again, this only gives us those two options, basically, right? Male and female. And I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a second, actually a second and a third related tables to store sex and gender, right? Or one or both or neither if you want, depending on what you want. And then we're going to have that as an option we can pick from with a combo box. And if it's other, we'll let the user type in other. Now, first thing we have to do, let's get rid of this checkbox here first. We'll get rid of you. Goodbye. All right, we'll come back to this in just a minute. Before we get started, a couple uh, quick prerequisites for you. This is an expert level video. What is expert? Well, it's a little more than beginner and it's not quite developer. We don't need any programming for this stuff, but you will need to know some relationships and making combo boxes and some other more, not advanced stuff, but beyond the beginner stuff. So uh, here's a couple of videos for you to watch if you haven't watched these yet. Make sure you understand relationships between tables. All right. And go watch this video on making a relational combo box. That's where you use a combo box to pick a value from a different table or query. That's what we're going to be doing today. These are both free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is set up tables for both sex and gender. All right. Remember, sex refers to biology, reproduction, physical differences between people, right? Anatomy, chromosomes, whatever whereas gender is more about identity and expression. So it's all a matter of what you want to store in your database, whatever works for you. No one's telling you what you got to do. It's, it's your database. These are your Legos. You put them together however you want, however inclusive you want to be. That's totally up to you. Now, I'm going to create two tables to keep it simple, but you could put these together in a single table if you want to. In fact, I got a separate video called Helper Data where you could take all the little teeny tiny tables that you have for things like, you know, a list of prefixes, Mr., Mrs., Ms., suffixes, junior, senior, right, titles, you know, even a list of states and city, all that stuff. You could put it in one table if you want, called a helper table. I don't want to blow anybody's brains, though, so I'm going to keep it simple for today. But if you want to learn more about this concept, go watch this video. So let's make two real simple, quick tables, create table design. And we will continue with this in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because one of the member benefits is they can watch videos as soon as they're posted and I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access, 
and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.